So I think the first time that a patient actually realises they might have a problem is when the optician from a routine um, appointment says, oh actually I think you need to see a glaucoma specialist, I'm a little bit worried about the pressures in your eyes, or they may say, well actually the optic nerve at the back of the eye looks a little bit suspicious and I'd like you to see a glaucoma specialist. And 99 times out of 100 the patient is not expecting that at all. So the initial um, anxiety around that is very, very high. You walk in expecting to have a new pair of glasses or be told you don't need your glasses to be changed and suddenly you're being advised to see um, a glaucoma specialist. And so I think, um, although in the vast majority of cases it's not an urgent referral whatsoever, but as soon as somebody says there might be something wrong, it's purely human nature to think, well I must see somebody straight away. Um, and the optician will, should talk you through it and explain why they're worried and what the urgency might be. However, we all know that we can sit very nicely in front of a professional and nod and say, yes, yes, I understand. And as soon as you leave the premises or leave that consulting room, you then think, oh my goodness, what am I going to do next? So I think that is the experience for the vast majority of patients. And um, I think one thing that private healthcare offers you is very early access to a high level specialist like myself who's very experienced in all types of glaucoma. And as soon as you make that appointment, we are able to talk you through what the concerns are. And quite often I can read a report and say, look, based on the initial assessment, I absolutely want to reassure you that you haven't lost vision, there's probably not a major problem here, but we need to do some tests and investigations in order to try and find out you know, whether you do have the condition um, or what we might need to do about it. So it's that thing about having early access to high quality information and a high quality professional. I think that's very important when you're faced with that bolt from the blue moment about um, a problem that you didn't even realise that you might have. I think a lot of patients um, or a lot of people who um, are told that they might have glaucoma may have never heard of the condition unless it's in their family. And I think it's almost the not knowing and the fact that you think, well, I feel okay, so how can I have a problem that is more worrying for somebody? If you have symptoms or you have problems with your vision, you're almost quite relieved when the optician says, well, I've found something and I think I might know someone who might help you. I think that pathway, which is often what patients with cataracts experience, they go with blurred vision and are relieved almost to be reassured and told, oh yes, this is a cataract, but I, can, I know somebody who can help you. Whereas with glaucoma, you know, it, it's not a problem that you're expecting to have. So clearly having a, a good access and rapid access to um, a specialist is really important. And I completely understand how um, you want those answers quickly and a lot of the time we, we, we might be saying well actually look the pressure reading at the optometrist is higher than we measure in the clinic and therefore I can reassure you at the first visit and say everything is fine. I think most people walk into a consulting room hoping that somebody's going to say oh don't worry everything is fine but then of course there are some patients who do have glaucoma and whilst that can be very upsetting when you first hear that I would totally, totally reassure you that it is much better to find out now when you have no symptoms because we can do something about it that may save your vision, make sure that you continue in the work and the lifestyle and the daily uh, choices that you make because early glaucoma appropriately managed means that you can carry on your life often virtually unencumbered because the treatment options today are so good and varied and they come in different forms and a different type of treatment may be right for you, a different type may be right for somebody else, so it's all about that personalised treatment plan. So of course you want me to say, oh it's, everything's fine, you don't need to worry, but if we do find glaucoma, it is much, much better that we find out now so that we can make appropriate treatment plans so that you carry on your life living with glaucoma as opposed to being your life being managed and taken over by your glaucoma. So as soon as we have made a treatment plan for you as well, after that first appointment and we decide that perhaps some further tests are needed or that we might start you on a treatment plan, I think what we really, really want you to feel secure about and what I really want you to feel empowered by is the fact that I can show you the pictures which help to make the condition make a lot more sense. Because when we're talking about the back of your eye, you can't see the back of your eye. You can see if you've got a swollen joint or if you're, you've got a rash on your skin, but you can't see the back of your eye. I can, and with all the technology that we have now in the clinics, we can 
take photographs and images of the back of the eye. We can talk you through all of those so suddenly this starts to make much more sense. It's not just an abstract concept that's going in, on inside your body that you just don't know about. And for me, I feel that managing a long-term condition like glaucoma, it's absolutely a partnership. It only works if you get good advice from your professional, but also that you understand why we're asking you to do the things that you do. And you can then take ownership of your treatment and that becomes much easier if you start to understand how we monitor the condition. And so it's very powerful being able to show you the image of the back of the eye and talk you through it so that it makes sense also showing you your visual field tests, and that's the test you do that tests the peripheral part of your vision. Um, when you put your head in the light bowl and you're asked to press the button when you see the light, at first that seems like a random sort of in 1980s arcade game, but it actually makes a lot of sense when somebody talks you through it and also actually helps you to perform the test better, which of course helps the professional make better decisions and judgments about your condition. So talking you through all of those tests and the pressures in the eye, I think really, really helps to set you on a pathway where you can understand why we're asking you to take the treatment that we've prescribed, or perhaps we might be deciding that drops are not the right thing and you need an operation. But having that sort of clarity of thought process from both professional and from yourself, and also for your family, I think really helps to, for you to take control of the treatment. So you're no longer doing what the doctor tells you, but you're part of that partnership in managing your own condition. I think it also helps then, when you know what the treatment plan is, is to plan your life around the early days, because the early days are the most unknown. If we're prescribing drops, I think patients often worry about, well, how am I gonna put them in? What if I struggle to put them in? If I wear contact lenses, do I put them in before or after? There are lots of these practical questions. And I think you mustn't ever be afraid about asking those questions. They will never be silly. It will never be a waste of time um, for the doctor because the easier we can make it for you to take your treatment, the easier it is to manage the condition. So I think that sort of feeling of relief when you know, okay, this is why I'm taking these drops, this is why I have to put them in every day, and that you know that we have a treatment goal. So if your pressure is 25 when we start and I say you need a pressure of 15, you come to the next appointment knowing that if the pressure's on track, then that's great and you're tolerating the treatment. So you know already before you come to the follow-up appointment what my hopes and expectations are. Um, and so having that understanding of what each appointment is for, I think is very empowering and also very reassuring. I think it's more difficult if a specialist doesn't really explain what they're expecting from treatment and you come back saying, I was making my eyes red and sore and you know, I, I don't really know if it's worth it. So, but once you have that understanding of what the target is, you might say, well, actually, it doesn't make my eyes feel that uncomfortable and I'm prepared to carry on taking it. Equally, you must never be afraid to say, well, actually, this treatment really is impacting on my life significantly. You know, I turn up to my first meetings, my eyes look red, people are saying to me, oh, what's wrong with you the whole time? And that's ruining my confidence in my job. Then we will look at something else. So having that two-way conversation can only help and you will never, ever ask a silly question. So please don't be inhibited by asking your specialist or relaying difficulties you're having with treatment. I think for other options, particularly surgical, I think that's also another potential freeze moment where you know, I think everybody slightly hopes that a condition can be treated with medication alone. But of course, there are some types of glaucoma where surgery would be our first choice. And in some ways, that can be very powerful because there are types of glaucoma like narrow angle glaucoma or primary angle closure where the surgery may cure you and we don't often say that in glaucoma, but there are some potentially curable forms of glaucoma. So don't assume that surgery is a bad thing or it means you've got bad disease.